It's Sunday. I'm it, actually, as you can see in the office, um, I was going to shoot this live. Then I decided I really didn't want to get drawn into it uh, in any form uh, emotionally. I just wanted to address it. Uh, it's something that was dropped on my desk literally last night. It took me a while to kind of look into it and research it so that I could speak on it from as much uh, of an educated perspective as far as the circumstances and situation uh, that led up to this. Uh, so I'm going to talk to you about it. Uh, I'm going to remind you, we are definitely in need of support. So if you believe in the work we're doing on any front, uh, go to the description box of this video and click on uh, the link to, to donate or just simply look at the uh, cash app handle for our cash app account for the Odyssey project and donate that way. Uh, a longtime friend reached out to me, a longtime friend who's a nurse, uh, reached out to me about a fellow nurse who happens to be a black man and uh, shared with me some very disparaging information, uh, a link that led to an article and a video and to keep it real simple, a black man who was in a relationship with a woman but battling his ex-wife for uh, visitation and custody of their kids who had been, uh, by what I can gather in research, wrongfully accused of sexually assaulting the kids um, for the sole sake of, and I'll get into this, the sole sake of just really being uh, as antagonistic to him and his new life as she possibly can. Uh, we know these type of women exist. Uh, I'm going to get into this in detail. But unfortunately, um, this black man, uh, for whatever reason, believed that he had reached the end of his rope, that there were no options, that uh, he uh, could no longer deal with it or take it. Uh, killed his current girlfriend who was pregnant uh, because when they got into an argument she basically told him she was going to do the same thing to him that his current uh, I mean his ex-wife was doing to him with the child and everything like that uh, then he while on the way to go kill the ex-wife records a live and lets everybody know what he's been through, uh, makes his case for being wrongfully accused and uh, a bunch of other stuff, and um, basically says, I'm going over here to kill her, then I'm going to kill myself because I can't go to prison. And I'm paraphrasing him a little bit, but ultimately that's it. Obviously, I'm not going to share the video he didn't do it on camera but it literally he talks until he gets to the door and she opens the door and sees him and she tries to sh shed it he in uh he runs through the door he kicks the door and the last thing that it says before the video cuts off is today's the day um uh, i was contacted by this nurse uh, who felt it was a mental health issue um, it's so much more, but it's definitely a mental health issue as well. I was contacting her because she felt I could make sense of it and she wanted me to address it in detail. And so I did in writing and I thought that I would also do it um, in a video, which allows me to somewhat express a little bit more um, in, in, in fluid flow of my thoughts. Uh, because the way my mind goes sometimes, even though I type 100 plus a minute, uh, sometimes my, my hands can't catch up with my mind and this allows me to kind of slow everything down uh, to a speed of talking and, and, and make sense of things. Um, first and foremost, let me say that under no circumstance is what he did acceptable or right. Uh, that violence uh, should be the last resort when defending yourself or those you love and should never be uh, an option in resolving conflict. With that being said, we're dealing with humanity and we're dealing with in many ways fractured and uh, fragile 
uh, psyches, not, not just egos, but psyches. And we have to be careful at the situations we put ourselves into. I want to further uh, disclaim, this is not aimed at uh, black women who are caught in horrible situations and are looking for a way out um, and have uh, fragile ego men who can't accept the fact that their trifling ways are no longer accepted and cause harm. This is not even to um, black women who had a man who did everything right, but you still decided to bounce and do something different because it's your prerogative. And he didn't respond the way he should have. This isn't for you. Uh, this is for women who literally make it their business to stick it to their ex, who are willing to manipulate the system and lie in order to cause him pain so that he can't enjoy uh, anything past and beyond them. Am I in any way saying that anybody deserved to die? Absolutely not. It was horrible. It was devastating. It was absolutely wrong. Here's the problem with that. I, I sit up and I did that. I, when I wrote, I found myself over and over again clarifying the fact that he was wrong. And at the end of writing that, I had clarified it like five times that I am without question saying what he did was wrong and unacceptable. But you know what? At the end of that, we still have three people dead. What's my point? Saying somebody is wrong in doing something doesn't, it doesn't eliminate the force behind what caused it to happen. Do we have some black men who are fragile in their egos and simply have not developed the social skills to uh, accept rejection? Absolutely. Do I believe this is one of the cases? Absolutely not. Do I think that what he did was acceptable? No, but again, here we are. We're talking about three families who are devastated now. The family of his girlfriend, who he called his ex-girlfriend. So obviously they had broke up and for whatever reason, she was threatening to do to him what the previous woman did. Am I? And then you have the ex-wife. Then you have his family. And you have children who are now been orphaned because adults couldn't figure it out. And it's gonna be real easy to blame the final aggressor because his action was so finite. His action didn't leave room for reconciliation. His action didn't leave room uh, to sit up and fight through. But what it is forcing us to do is to start to look at something. And, and, and sisters, I think I've fought for you hard enough. I think I've spoken up for you enough that you know I have nothing but the utmost love for my black sisters that to the point that I'm offering at odds with my brothers because they feel like I'm kissing up to you guys. No, I just believe that the black man's responsibility is to protect the black woman. So in no way am I sitting up saying that this was justified. But what I'm sitting up saying is any human being, including myself, has a breaking point. Now, it's my responsibility to ensure that I never get close to it. And the way that I do that is I decompress, I evaluate, and I process. I have an unbelievably long list of coping mechanisms, but I also have two professional uh, professionals who I go to to ensure that I'm always in a good place. Because when you work with people who aren't in good places at the level I do and the frequency I do, it wears on you. And then there are all these other things that come at you. It can easily be a situation where you're in a place where you're not good. And here's the problem. Anybody could be this close to a psychotic break and 99% of the people on this planet wouldn't know it. They're not trained to see it. They're not sensitive to it. They don't understand it. That everybody, see the vast majority of people are in a place where they believe that there are these rules that you operate right by and they just simply are there. And, and if you don't violate this rule, then that, that, that can't happen to you. Let me tell you something that I learned a long time ago. Once you infringe upon, you don't, some people you don't even have to infringe on that piece. You could just be mistaken and you could be in trouble. But let me tell you something. Once you infringe upon the peace of a person, meaning that you do something to them that's wrong, you don't get to dictate how they respond. Now, if you punch me 
and I shoot you. I overreacted, but you're still shot. You initiated something that you could not predict the outcome of based off of the idea, uh, and a false and erroneous idea, that if I hit him, the worst case scenario is he's going to hit me back. No, the worst case scenario is I'm in a whole different place than you are, and my, my uh, paradigm, my environment, what I came through, how I see things, says if you touch me, I got the right to take you out. I may not be operating on the same values, interests, and principles you're operating on. My value system may be different, or I just may be at a point where I'm at the edge and you just happen to be that straw, and then you do what you do, and it costs you. What, what am I getting at? Under no circumstances is what happened in this situation okay. Okay justify or acceptable but we are going to have to be honest and start doing something that we don't seem ready to do we're ready to label the back black man as fragile emotionally fragile egotistically fragile and hostile and violent towards the black woman and in cases we are we know by the uh statistics on intimate partner homicide intimate partner violence that there's a problem we don't like to acknowledge that intimate partner violence happens equally on, on both sides statistically, that a black man is, more, is equally as likely to be harmed by his mate as a black woman. But a black woman is significantly more likely to be killed by her mate than a black man or any other person or woman or anybody on the planet. We've got problems. But what we don't need to do is ex exacerbate the problems by not calling out behaviors that contribute to it. See, because the moment that a person says, you shouldn't have done this, the, ne the next response to it is, so you're saying that what he did was right. No, what I'm saying is just because he's wrong doesn't make her right. And, 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 and if it could have avoided it, my whole thing is I have no place for a man who's so emotionally messed up that if a woman says she doesn't want you anymore, you've, you have to harm her. I have no place for a man who sits up and looks at a woman and thinks because she didn't speak to him when he spoke that he has a right to harm her or even speak to her in an ugly manner. People who follow me know how I am about black women. But I also have a problem with a black woman who will sit up and lie on a black man, put him in the crosshairs of the system, sit up and play with his relationship with his kids solely because you're angry that he moved on. And let's not pretend that she's not out there. Let's not pretend that we don't have women out there that's their sole purpose is she's bitter because he moved on and she's not going to let him be happy. So she's going to attack him in every way he can and take whatever she can from him. While he is dead wrong for what he did, no pun intended, please don't take that that way, but he, he's wrong. You don't get to determine at what point a person is going to break. From what I understand, he had fought hard for these kids. He had fought hard against uh, the accusations that he had sexually abused the kids. His co-workers and his friends on his side, like I said, this is a nurse. This isn't some clown on the street. This is a person who went through the proper channels and was simply getting his butt kicked. Wrong time, wrong place, never know what's going on. Uh, there's a lot of pressure going on on medical personnel uh, during uh, this pandemic for a lot of different reasons. Some of them are threat being threatened to lose their jobs behind uh, protocols. Some are dealing with so many hours they can't manage it. Uh, so others are looking at so much suffering and then on top of that your personal life so you never know where that person is at at any given time my, 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 my take on this is real simple we don't need to be harming each other but harming each other isn't just the end result here that's finite and it's just and it's devastating and it's senseless and it's just another thing we've got in our community where we are dealing death. And so, no, 
I'm not on his side. But I am talking about the reality that created it. And I'm talking about it because I lived on it. I just happen to be a person that's in a place where I will not let things take me to a certain place. Am I capable of doing some things? Yes, but it will be in the defense of me and those I love. It will never be because somebody upset me or because somebody wronged me or because, because there's too much at stake for the people I love for me to be taken away behind something stupid. And I think about it and I train myself not to respond to my emotions. Have I always been that way? No. But I've always been a bit way about women. I'm never like, I'm not finna harm a woman. That's just the way I'm trained. If I was gonna harm a woman, there's one a long time ago, we not, we're not gonna call any names or make any designations, that definitely, if, if, if there was ever a person that deserved it, my God. And yet, they still moving around doing crazy, shady shit and alive because I'm just simply not me. But, everybody's not where you at and one of the things that i noticed when i went and started doing my research is everybody's judging his action based from their position of reason rationale and common sense that's nothing common and reasonable and rational about saying i'm about to end two lives including mine and leave my kids orphans that's not reasonable. That's not. There's something not right with that. And, you know, even though there's a short period where I get to observe him and then I get to go look back and dig up all these little forensic details that, that lead up to this point, he was totally detached. He was, he was, he, it was, he was detached. It wasn't even, it didn't even seem angry. And so people are saying he was, he's just cold and cat. No. He had a psychotic break. He detached from reality, and his resolution to all of his problems was what he did. Is it, was he right? No. Did it make sense? Absolutely not. That's the whole point of a psychotic break. And the thing is, you don't. Ninety-nine percent of the people can't even possibly know when somebody's at that point. The idea that th you think you can just keep prodding somebody because you're getting a certain level of enjoyment out of it and that it can't come back with force is foolish and irresponsible. If we're gonna talk about getting black men in check, which we do, we need to get black men in check. We have far too many black men harming black women, black children, and each other to ever really talk about experiencing any type of real liberation. It's a joke if you want to be honest with it. I'm so sick of seeing death dealed on a daily basis in the black community. But if we're going to talk about that, we're going to have to be honest and talk about what's going on with our women. That you're so angry, that you're so bitter, that you're lying on someone and threatening their freedom and inhibiting them from being a part of their child's life, which is so important from what I could gather. I could be wrong and I could only be getting part of the story, but I've looked and I've list, I've went to a couple of different places where he's known. And while people are absolutely angry at him and, 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 and going at him hard, they're also acknowledging that she lied on him and that he was a great guy and a great father. And, 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 and a lot of them, I think, are feeling betrayed. Because when you believe in somebody, the last thing you want to see them do is that. You know, nobody wants to be the person that was standing by this guy right now because now he did the unforgivable. But we have to be willing to talk about how he got there. And we have to be responsible enough and mature enough to say that uh, talking about how he got there doesn't release him of his responsibility for what he did. See, that's what most people want to do. The moment that someone starts talking about the things that led up to it, it's going to be automatically associated with you're condoning what he did. No, I don't condone what he did. We have enough death in the black community without dealing anymore. But what I'm saying is we need to deal with the issues that get us there. And this situation is the only type of issue that gets you there. It's so many things going on in our community that we don't address until it becomes a problem. And then we just want to look at the surface 
and we just want to talk and whine about the surface. We want to talk about the end result, but we don't want to look at causality. Cause and effect is a universal law. We're looking at the effect, but we rarely look at the cause. The effect is a black man took two other lives and his own, leaving children parentless, leaving three families grieving, leaving countless friends, co-workers, and relatives uh, trying to make sense of it. There's going to be a lot of people who need counseling after this because he got lost in, 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 in a moment and I think experienced a psychotic break. This wasn't rage. And see, rage will make you do it too. Rage, he was, there was no rage. He was just done. And you don't know when people are there. And you can't keep saying, well, a black man is just supposed to. Anybody can break. And we shouldn't be trying to break people. And the truth of the matter, if we're honest, there are people out there trying to break people. Won't be happy until they're broken. Here's the problem. Once you break them, you don't get to determine how they express their brokenness. You might break them but you don't get to determine how they express their brokenness. It could have ended up a lot worse. From what I understand, it just so happens that he caught both of them alone. What if the time that he reached that moment, they weren't? I'm so sick of death. Senseless death. If you got to protect your home, protect your home. If you got to protect your kids and your family, protect your kids and your family. If somebody moves against your family and causes harm, tighten their ass up. Got no problem with that. You've got to send a message that yours aren't to be messed with. But sitting up because you're in, 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 at odds with somebody and the way you settling it is to kill them, that's a better alternative. It may not seem like it. But I want, I want you to think about this. What if you didn't do something? That somebody just got a wild hair in their ass and decided to say you did. And what they're saying you did could literally take you away from this world and take away your freedom. And put a tag on you that will stay there for the rest of your life. And you feel you're losing. At some point, you stop doing checks and balances on probability and you feel I have nothing more to lose there's nothing more dangerous than a person with nothing to lose be careful of putting people in positions where they feel they have nothing to lose my, my heart goes out to all of the families, uh, despite me uh, chastising women, my heart goes out to the women who lost their life. Uh, because whatever they are doing and however they were doing it, that pain came from somewhere too. Those are things we need to talk about too, is why were they that way? What happened? And this isn't to uh, exonerate him of anything he may have done in the relationship that could have created the hostility. I can only go on what I was able to find is that he didn't molest those kids. What else he did, I don't know. But uh, the people who knew him and knew what was going on uh, were acknowledging that she was just trying to get him. She was getting at him in every way she could. Now, here's another one that my sisters aren't gonna like. Ladies, stop gassing up your girls to go at these dudes like this. Stop gassing them up. If your ex is a threat to your kids, here's the horrible truth. Here's the horrible truth. If your ex is a threat to your kids, then there's an immensely high possibility that they are simply and inherently a threat to you. If they will harm their kids, they will harm you. Here's the problem. 
If they are a threat to the kids, your options are limited. You've got to do what you've got to do to protect the kids, which is probably going to put you in a greater state of danger. That type of man needs to be dealt with exactly, absolutely, and immediately before they cause harm. But you are going to have to do something. You don't have a choice. You're protecting the kids. But if that man isn't a threat to those kids, and he's actually a loving person towards those kids, and you classify him as anything else less than that, and you put that relationship between him and those kids in jeopardy, you immediately put yourself in harm's way whether you realize it or not. Again, not justifying violence at all here. Definitely not violence from men to women. You know me. But at some point, we got to start owning all the shit, not just sitting up dumping it on the backs of black men and not understanding that shit. You can shit on a person long enough, and eventually you're going to feel them. And then everybody in this situation is, is, is totally devastated and hurt because we don't know how to deal with one another. And see, like I said, because of what he did, which is the ultimate violation, the ultimate sin, the ultimate crime, everything is going to be fo focused on him because what he did was horrible. But we can't keep looking past this behavior over here. We got to start reconciling our issues without becoming hostile to one another. Because what I'm thinking about now is kids who are orphaned. And they're orphaned in the worst possible way. One parent killed the other and then killed themselves. They didn't die in a car crash. That's, that's devastating. That, that, that's traumatic. They destroyed one another or one destroyed both and left you alone. Nobody thought enough of you. Dad couldn't get through it. Dad couldn't figure it out. To those kids, it's not going to matter whether dad had a psychotic break. All they're going to know is dad couldn't figure it out enough to stay here and to leave mom here. They're going to go through years of treatment. Or they're going to become a problem. Because we don't know how to deal with one another because we don't know how to get through our problems. We don't know how to do amicable breakups. We don't know how to co-parent. And it all starts back is we don't know how to choose mates. Like I said, a lot of people are gonna get triggered because everybody wants to take the easy route. The easy, the easy route and the easy aim here is him. And he deserves every bit of what he gets, but it ain't all him. And that's what nobody wants to talk about. It ain't all him. It's a lot of what we won't talk about. We're going to have to deal with our brokenness. We're going to have to deal with our bitterness. We're going to have to deal with our hurt and our, and our suitcased trauma that we just pack around and pass down generation after generation. We're destroying ourselves from within. The greatest threat aren't white police officers. The greatest threat is the one that may be sitting right next to you. On that note, look, I'm getting out of here. I got enough to do. But I didn't want to take this energy into my truck. I talk about a lot of stuff in the truck on the way home. Today's Sunday. I'm going home and spend some time with my wife. I'm going to love on my wife and my kids. And I'm going to be grateful and thankful for what I have and I'm going to pray for the strength to be even a better man uh, than I've been to everybody I come in contact with and so I'm leaving it here in the office and I'm going to clear the office out before I go but I didn't want to talk about this in the truck so on that note uh, man we got work to do Finally, again, um, 
if you believe in the work that we're doing at the Odyssey Project, part of which is mental health, uh, another part is uh, black men lead the the, the, the uh, right of uh, right of passage socialization program to help reduce violence among black men, uh, restoring ghettos, forgotten daughters, working with our young girls and young women. Uh, hey. Go to the description box, and there are a couple of different ways you can give. Show some love. But we got work to do. I mean, I'm so glad. Well, people know me. People know not to send me anything where there's actually an act of violence in it. Uh, but I was starting to wonder for a minute when I got that video because he was headed there while he was talking. He literally gets there, but I'm just so grateful that it wasn't anything that, but it was still enough to really just like, this is how close you are to knowing this guy is about to just totally devastate more lives. Cause he's already taken a life by the time he shoots the video. He's on his way to take another one and his own. And he lets you know he's doing it. He's letting you know. And um, just wow. Uh, I think I'll put the link in the description box uh, for those who want to familiarize themselves with the story. Maybe there are some things you may even know about it that I don't that can bring, bring clarity or point to the fact that it wasn't what it seemed to be. At the end of the day, he took three lives, including his own. We can't keep accepting black death as the collateral damage of our trauma. On that note, I'm out of here.